Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yeah, take this opportunity to welcome you to Shiloh Worship Center, place of breakthrough. My name is Beatrice Huithaka, and I'm born again. I am a daughter in this house. I want to appreciate our parents in absentia, our bishop, Pastor Alice, and the pastoral team. Welcome to this service. This service is becoming hot, and it is at, uh, as it becomes hot, we continue praying, interceding for our next sanctuary. That's where we are heading. When I see this month, we've been doing on Sundays. We've been doing the theme of giving. The month of June has been our giving month every Sunday, and on Wednesdays we tackle prayer and fasting. Because next month, the month of July, we'll have 21 days of prayer and fasting. That is the culture of this church for our new members. We normally do 40 days in the month of January. Then in July, we do 21 days. It is not giving for the past six months. And therefore, on Wednesdays, we welcome you to join us as we look at the theme of prayer and fasting, the how and why, and the benefits of prayer and fasting. Then on Monday, tomorrow, we have corporate prayers in this place. We meet here at 6 to 7 for only one hour. And God is doing great things in this place. When you come through that door on Monday, we're given a paper. You write your prayer request. Then at the end of the prayers, we have a basket here where we lift this, those prayers before the Lord. And we believe the one who sits in secret pays us in the open. Amen. Then on Wednesday, we are here for our midweek services. I said, please beat part and parcel of where the action is. If you can be here on Monday, we'll appreciate. Because you come here because of your own needs. I cannot send you to bring my needs here. Because at the end of the day, they, we will bring them half. Because we may choke her. But when you bring yourself here on Monday, believe you me, you have all the time. This altar is open. You have all the time to present yourself before your maker and before your father. Let's pray for the word. Loving father in the name of Jesus. We know you never gather your people in vain. This is the day that you have made up of father. We purpose to rejoice and be glad in it. And because you brought us into this house that is called by your name, dear father, we pray that you're going to speak to us in Jesus' name. We know that you have a solution for every situation. We have come here, dear father, downcasted. Come and lift us, Jehovah, father. We have come here disappointed. Come and lift us, Jehovah, father. We have come here in fear. Come and save us, dear father. We have come here, Jehovah, in doubt. Come, Jehovah, speak one word into our lives. You know, dear Lord. There are so many words, but you need only one word from you. We know there are so many news, but you need the good news from you. Therefore, as we gather ourselves to you, our ears are open to hear you telling us this is the way, walk in it. We love you because we know out of this word we'll be saved. Out of this word we'll be healed. Out of this word we'll be encouraged. Out of this word our ways will be straight. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to tackle the topic this morning, stewardship. And our scripture verse comes from the book of Luke 16, verse 1 to 13. Now Jesus was also saying to the disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a, a manager for his estate. And accusations against this man were brought to him that this man was squandering his master's possessions. Verse 2. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an amounting of your management of my affairs, for you can no longer be my manager. The manager of the estate said to himself, What will I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I am not strong enough to dig for a living. And I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I will do. That is what I want you to understand. That if it is your Bible, underline, I know 
what I will do. So that when I am removed from the management, people who are my master's debtors will welcome me into their homes. So he summoned his master's debtors one by one. That shows there were many. One by one. And he said to the first, how much do you own my master? He said, a hundred measures of olive oil. And he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write. Write. Corruption ni kuanza sai. Unana kwenye lianza. Write. 50. Let's continue. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write 80. And his master commended the unjust manager for his misdeeds. But, sorry, and his master commanded commended the unjust manager, not for his deeds, but because he had acted shrewdly by preparing for his future unemployment. For the sons of this age, the non-believers are shrewder in relation to that, to their own kind, to their own kind. That is, to the ways of the secular world than are the sons of light, the believers. And I tell you, learn from this. Make friends for yourselves for eternity by means of the wealth of, unrighteous, or of unrighteousness, that is, the material <coughs> resources as a way to Father, the kingdom of God, so that when it runs out, they will welcome you into the eternal dwellings. We'll continue up to verse 13. Now, this morning, we want to look at the topic, stewardship. And I want to speak to you, as I speak to myself, that we've been made stewards. And now we want to sit in the office of our stewardship. Because it is a steward and others in the same ship. So I believe this is a ship. So we are steward in the same ship. So we are stewardship. Stewardship is a careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's, one else. What we are talking about this morning, it is not our property. It is not our possession. It is somebody else's possession that has made us, given us an employment, and made us to be steward. And remember this, friends. For you to be a good steward, number one, you must be faithful. There's nobody who can give you a job knowing that you are a thief. Allow me to bring the message home. I know most of us here live in a flat, and in that flat, maybe there are six floors, and the owner of that flat has made you to be the caretaker. Leave alone the manager. Leave alone the, the, the steward. Let's narrow down and make you a caretaker. One thing, a caretaker does not pay rent. Am I right? Yes. Number two, it doesn't leave, pay power. Am I right? It doesn't pay water. Am I right? Because of the services he renders to the owner of the flat. And therefore this man, the Bible says that he was a rich man. And because he was rich, I believe he had so many flats, not, not only in Zimmerman or the other places, but let's now read to Zimmerman. You, who is sitting on this place, in this place this morning, you are a steward. And you are required to be faithful. When this owner of the flat heard what is happening on the ground, because my prayer is, you have people on the ground. Have a near on the ground. For us, the pastors, we are the ears of the bishop. Where? On the ground. Before bishop knows what is happening, it is us who knows what is happening. When I say us, I mean the resident pastors. So this owner of the flower was told, whatever he sees, because I believe he doesn't come there to collect rent or to pay the people who wash because you are there to wash. Somebody told him what is happening on the ground. And you can see and you can hear 
what was happening on the ground. People were given debts from right, left, and center. Somebody 100,000, somebody 10,000, another one a million. But when this owner of the apartment came, or the owner of the flat came, he told me, I have heard what you've been doing. Now go and bring me all the accounts. Before he bring the accounts, he knew I must prepare where I will go, my exit, because this place I am leaving, where will I go? So he prepared a place for himself. Because he knew. He kazi mefanya nini? Si meisha. Kwa uzuri. Kutakuwa na party ya farewell. Unwa kama kutakuwa na party ya farewell. Akajua kwa sabu kazi naisha. Na mi razima nifanya nini? Nijipange. Umeko kijipanga. Sasa bako nita kujipanga. Before he, call, he did all the accounts. He called all those, all those people. He had given debts. He told them. How much? He doesn't even know. He is asking. Ukinuliza, unataka kununua inguo pesa? Ngapi nitakwambia 50 bob? See, it is my disposal, si ndio? And he said, I owe you a hand. He said, write 50. So that the 50 that is remaining can prepare him somewhere where he's going to land because the kazi imeisha. Friends, this man that is what he did. Everybody who had a debt, he paid half. Others 80. Instead of 100, some paid 80. Instead of, uh, eight, instead of 100, others paid 45. Others paid 40. When he brought back the report, that's where Jesus picked this message and he talked to his disciples and told them that this man was not condemned because he was shrewd. No, he was not condemned because he was very wise. And my message this morning is to ask you, are you wise? Because this man, in the guidance that he was shrewd and he was unjust, he was not condemned. But the master, master saw this man was very wise. Wise than the sons of the light. Wise than the believers. Because for us, we are still wise. But we don't take care of what we've been given. Stewardship. Is faithfully using God's resources to do God's work. That's why you've been called a steward. Not for you. You are God's property. And because you're God's property, he brings on board other properties so that you can be a good steward. And that's why the Bible says that, that you hear him telling you, well done, good and faithful servant. Did he say good and faithful manager? He said, well done, good and faithful Servant, you are a servant. That's why Jesus took a towel, wrapped it ar ar around his waist, and washed his disciples' feet because he portrayed the, the spirit of a servant. But for us, friends, we want to live as a boss. This man forgot that he's a steward. He gave out everything that concerns the, money, the, the owner. When the owner came, there was nothing to make him happy. Can we make our Lord happy? He pointed us, you and men, made us to be stewards in the kingdom. Are we bringing value to the kingdom? Number nine, verse nine says that he used the resources available to him to secure friends for his future. This man was very wise. He knew after this place, I must make my name. Because after that door, where will I go? He made number one. What I will do is open that all this, my manager money, I'm going to make them friends. So that after this door, I can have a cup of tea in his hotel. I can have a cabbage from his marketplace. I can have a dairy up on your kiosk because nirikata pesayao nanusu. Friends, the Lord wants us to be stewards to God's property. You are his property. And he wants you to be a, what? a good steward of his property. Jesus said about that, that the sons of light are often not as wise as the sons of this age. Can you compare yourself? Somebody who's not born again, and you are born again. Jesus said that, that you are not wise as people of the dark, knowing for sure that our Father, our Savior, is the light of the world. You are coming after who? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In him there is no darkness. It is light but you are living in a world that is full of dark. If the sons of light were wise, 
That is also those of us who are believers, those in the kingdom, if you are wise, we'd use our money to secure friends for our future. And not an earthly future, but a heavenly future. Jesus says, if you, are, if you use your money wisely, you will make friends for yourself. Who are these friends? This is where the friends are. We announce upon this pulpit that you are going to you are going out for evangelism. You cannot be found because you are too busy. What will I tell them? What were you told for you to get born again? You are told Jesus loves you. As simple as that. Just tell that sinner, Jesus loves you. We announce on this pulpit that you are going to mother a hospital. To do what? To reach out to the sick. There are people who are in hospital beds. They do not, not go back home. They went they, went, they entered into the hospital, they were admitted. From there, they, the bodies are going to the mortuary. But you are here, the Lord is saying, I'm counting on you as a steward, because you are still sitting on a seat of a stewardship, that you go to hospital and say for me those souls. But you say, Mimi, I said in the first service, when you be sick, like that, do you have the grace I admit you? Nobody has the grace of visiting the hospital, but it's the value of a soul because you are sitting on the seat of a steward. Jesus will not come back here to go to Mother Hospital. It is you and me to go to that hospital and tell the, 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 those who are sick that Jesus loves you. It's not about the condition of your body, it's about the condition of your heart. We don't go for home cells. Me, I eat only Sunday. Think of this physical body. Can you survive with one meal? You are nowhere. Your name is in the list of the home, home cell members, but you are nowhere to be found. Wait until something occurs. Unasema, I belong to, to your home cell. Please make room for your friends. Just make room for your friends. You don't go to networks. Men and ladies that are here. We have men groups. We have ladies groups but you don't belong to any because you are self-sufficient. Are you a steward? Are you a steward? This service begins at 10.30. 10.30, tunenda kununua mukate. 10.30, tunasadimia na pale kwa gate. 10.30, tunafta uba. 10.30, tunangale kama kuna pancha kwa migu. I told the first service, when service begins at 10.30, the Lord sends an angel. Go down and bring me the number. People that are there by 10.30, he comes and counts them. 35.150, he takes back the number. Oh, kingi hapa na sarambu za rafiki, number isha enda. Are you a good steward? The Lord is counting on you. He has given you a, an office called stewardship. But are you faithful? Are you faithful? Those people that you have invested in when you go to hospital, that one soul, when that one soul comes to the Lord and there's joy in heaven, it is written your name. Not the name of that person, but it's written you. I told the first service here that when you go to the airport, and you don't know your host, what they do, they write your name, my name is Beatrice. I found somebody with a placard, he said, Beatrice, and I know that is my host. Because he doesn't know me. The same case will happen in heaven. People that you have invested in their lives, through your money, through your time, through your resources, you will find, they say, that is Beatrice, they will come to welcome me. Who will welcome you in heaven? Utakuwa mugeni wanani? Umefungua mlangu. Mlangu umefunguka hivi ya binguni. Wanangalia, unuangalia, hakuna mtu amandika china yako. Because you never invested in people. We are called to be good stewards. Make use of that office. That you are a good steward. That is to say that when you are in heaven, there will be a welcoming committee. Hallelujah. A welcoming committee to welcome you because you invested. When people were laughing, you were crying. When people were eating, you were praying. When people were seeking other things, 
you are seeking the Lord. Because you know, Matthew 7, 7 to 8 says, that seek and you do what? Anything that you seek, you seek, seek on the positive, you will find. Seek on the negative, you will find. Knock shall be opened. Every door. If you knock, the door of a church, it will be opened. The door of a bar, the door of a disco place, they will be open. Whatever there is a door, believe you me, when you knock, shall be open. And then he said what? Ask and shall be given unto you. What are you asking this morning? Whatever you ask, because you have two laws, the Lord of this right and the Lord of the left. Whoever you will ask, I tell you, we receive. You'll be given. It is upon you to know what are you asking and who are you asking? Because you shall receive it. The Bible says that if you want to do good, do it to the extreme. If you want to do bad, do it to the extreme because all these things have a reward. And Jesus will come holding the reward and he's going to pay you according to your deeds. Therefore, sit on that seat well, the seat of a steward. Because everything that you do under this sun has a reward. When I feel Using your money to purchase friends for eternity. A simple as that. Somebody reached you. It took somebody somewhere to come and tell you, regardless where you have come from, regardless your background, Jesus loves you. You said, me, with all my faults, yes, Jesus loves you. And because of you, Jesus came. Just go tell somebody. We normally go for evangelism this second Sunday. Just stand here at the gate. Don't go anywhere. Just stand there. Target those who are coming from this side. And I don't target those who are coming from this side. One hour, we come back here with the sheaves. Just that. Doesn't require your education. Doesn't require your degrees. Doesn't require your background. Just require your mouth. The Lord told Jeremiah, open your mouth and I will feed my words. I'll speak to one people through your mouth. Your name is the mouth. But you say, Mami, Miss Sandy, Nikitoka Church, Sungangu Yakulala, and Aulale. What to Atana Utalala? What to Lale? What to find a nini? To Lale. To Pomusisha Mwili. Sindio. To Pomusisha Mwili. Using your money to advance the gospel. Sadika said something here this morning when we were praying that he, he, he's, uh, he's getting upset because of the rest in peace. There are so many. Even in our church here, for the last two weeks, we have had almost 11 deaths. 11 or 12, to be precise. In those, those deaths, they have been in the, in, in the page. You see, Una Semaga, he haini husu, Una Peter. It's not about the money, it's not about the amount. Support the heart. These people are hurting. Your shilling will propel, the, 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 it will shorten their, their mourning period. My shilling will shorten their budget. But when I say, my, hey, who come here before? What can you come This is life. And life has two sides. They can coin to be valid, but have two sides the positive and the negative. But you say, hey, what I pity? Hey, now I'm a few. Are you a steward? You use your money for heavenly purposes. You want have to, to, the, the, the kingdom of God to expand as a kingdom of, of hell contrast. But you see, you cannot do without money. We need money. We've been in Akuru this week. We came back on Friday. And Deliverance Church is celebrating 55 years next year. And Bishop Mark has a vision of, 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 of winning a million souls. So he's it's, it's calling it hashtag a million, one million more at 55. He needs a million shilling to, 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 uh, to win a million souls. And people gave money. People gave money because they understood the value of a soul. Friends, we are living in the last days. And we are redeeming them because the days are evil. And we must do this thing with our money. Salvation is free. But gospel is very expensive. You cannot go to the petrosin and tell the petrosin attendant, Ninaenda mwingi kwa evangelist. Uniweke mafuta. Can it work? And you are sitting on your money as a steward. It's time to give. It's not about your, the amount. It's about the heart. If you know it took somebody somewhere to make you come and be counted in the kingdom. 
the Lord is saying, I need your money. And the money you have, it is for the, not you as, you are just a steward. You are just a caretaker of that money. You say that I'm working. Yes, you are working, but he has given you the strength, the ability, and that job. But when the money comes, unauliza, it is net, is it net or gross? Kwa sabi kukwa mkono yako. The Lord is counting on us. He's calling us stewards. Steward of his properties. Where you cannot go, your money can go. When that soul is won into the kingdom, when you reach heaven, it will be written, James. Because that person reached heaven because of the money that James gave. But how can we go? We are honestly we're stating on what the Lord has given us. It is high time that we send our people out. We normally say that the capacity of our, the strength of a church, it is in the sending capacity. That is the strength of a church. If you are all here, we are doing nothing. Look at the Red Sea. For it to be Red Sea, because it doesn't have an outlet, it is, it is a Red Sea. Dead, uh, sorry, a Red Sea. But for us to have outlets, we are going to be sweet water sea. And for this, this place to be a, a, a water that has taste, a sweet water taste, a sweet, wat, uh, sweet water, we must have outlets. Like today, we sent a team to Kemori, Kemori girls. That's the strength of our church. Can you imagine that you have been sitting upon that pew for the last one year? You have not told anybody Jesus loves you. You have not even won a soul. When you look back, there's nobody behind you. Friends, may we be good stewards in our giving. When you speak of giving, it's like the something that triggers in you. When you pesa kila sa, you cannot do without money. In Nairobi, from the least, go to Nairobi town. From the toilet, the toilet. See you store. See the toilet. You pay for those services. But here in church, na sema he in church imeja na pesa. Sasa tunata kujenga church. Tujenga na nini? Tunjenga na pesa. Iko api o pesa. Kwa gross amakuwa net. It's not how much you have. It's the matter of your heart attitude. If you look at this, the story of the, 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 the poor widow, and Dr. Ron talked about here on Sunday, the poor widow gave two penny, and the rich man gave a lot of money. What is the difference? This poor widow came and gave her everything. She came and dropped in the basket where Jesus was washing. But the rich people, they threw because they had a lot. Friends, it's all about your heart attitude, not about the money. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. If you have been faithful, in verse number 12, if you have been faithful, you have, you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another man's, then who is going to give you that which is your own? You must be tested by being faithful to someone else that the Lord can give you that which is your own. And then on, on, in return, you're also going to, to, to employ people who are faithful, like you are faithful. It is a chain. You are faithful, God gives you yours, and then God gives you people that are going to employ that are faithful, not shrewd people. Everything you have is God's. And you are not faithful in how you use God's money, which is given to you as a stewardship here it will show up in the fact that you will not be given a full reward that will be your own in heaven or in eternity. We begin to build our capacity here. So the Lord can entrust us with his resources. All that we are, we are God's property. And it's bringing others on us so that we can be stewards of God's property in his people. Because new believers will come. How do you tell them, do not tithe? Because tithe and you don't tithe. And I said in the first service, you, you, Jesus, the, the disciples asked Jesus, Master, teach us how to pray. And he showed them a model of prayer. That our Father who art in heaven, so you know the Lord's prayer. That is not all that we need. In that Lord's prayer, he didn't say, and give me a husband. Give me a wife. Give me a business. It is not there. But that was a model of prayer. The same case applies to tithe. 
When he said you give 10% of your tithe, you pay because it is pay. 10% of your tithe. You don't just limit yourself to 10%. Unasema, me, I'm going to give my, my, my tithe. And my tithe is 5,150. You even go to the shop in the morning, took off 50 shillings. Ukona 50 mbili. Because you want to live at to, to give your tithe, come with me in a rural. You cannot go overboard. My 10% is 5,150. Because you want to live the law. But friends, we cannot challenge God by living by grace. And I told the first service here, me, I don't give 10%. I give 14%. My salary. I give my tithe 14%. Susan is here, was my accountant, Mulise, 14%. And I've seen the faithfulness of God because I don't live under the law, but under the grace. Wherever unapima, unapima hivi, back in Africa, Musho. But let me tell you this the Lord will bless you. But what will do? He'll bless you, na your ruler. Hivi. Siya kuna penaka na ruler. Ata kupima hivi, na plumb line. Hivi, yezi enda combo. Because you give straight. Ata kupea hivi. Nothing overboard. You never lack. Because you are a faithful. You are faithful. Tither. Sema, you are faithful tither. Sino wana tithe? But you cannot go overboard. That's why you cannot even join those links in charge. When you want to build, to, to build Shiloh, your name is not there. When you want to, people are believed, your name is not there. Because where we would it a tithe and period. Friends, we've been called, called to be steward. To be steward. The wealth of this world may not last even in this life. Money has no money. Nobody can say that he's the owner of the man of money. No money has no owner. I think that is the right word. Money has no owner. It just comes to you from you. It's like a cycle. When that money lands in your hand, do it justice. Support the kingdom. So that when you go to heaven. You cannot even see the end of the line because the people that you invested in invest in the kingdom. For each of us, our stewardship will one day come to an end. Like that manager, one morning by the end of the day, how could a job? The same case will apply to us. But my prayer is, who will welcome you when you go to heaven. The preacher's voice, like my voice, the mental faculties and strength will not last forever. The way we are, we are not everlasting. It's only a stone that is everlasting. As you're in transit, we come and go. But my question is, when you go, where will you go? Yes, we'll go to heaven. But who will welcome you? A mother's stewardship over her children changes and diminishes greatly. Think of a mother and her children. But that love diminishes greatly. Then he says, it's a matter of who you serve. This is what the Lord said. It's a matter of who you serve, who you love, and who is your master. Because if he's your master, you're going to submit to him. If he's your master, you can honor him. If he's your master, you can be a good steward. But who is your master? Whom do you love? Whom do you serve? Buana Sifiwe. You can't take money with you to heaven. Either literal or much or, may, or more. It is going to stay here. But you can invest it in such a way as to reap the reward of that investment forever in the friends that will come you. In, the, in heaven, you invest such an investment that you say, we are going, you are there. Let us look at biblical wisdom on stewardship. Biblical wisdom on stewardship. Number one, we are managers of God's material resources. We are managers 
of God's material resources. Not spiritual resources. It is material. Things that you can see. You can touch money. So you can touch money. Sasa nikisema nani yako na 1000 utaguza utaguza kwa sababu kwa nini ninakaa nyuma i have no idea kwa nini pesa ikaagi hapa inakaa nyuma i have no idea the employer represent god and the manager represent christians this is the analogy that we, we, we saw in the book of luke the manager represents christians just as the money Just as the money he managed belonged to his, he managed yeah the manager managed the money belonged to his employer so the money and material resources under our control are God's whatever you have is it your salary it belongs to God do you have a house it belongs to God do you have a car do you have children everything that you have anything that is tangible it belongs to God We are God's managers entrusted with the sum of his resources and responsible to use them to advance his purpose. Be like a tap. A tap does not drink the water. It is just there. The water flows through the tap so that us we can drink it. Are we together? In 1 Corinthians 4 verse 7. 1 Corinthians 4:7. The Bible says, for who regards you as superior or what sets you apart as special? It's a question. Who regards you as superior? What do you have that you do not receive from another? And if in fact you received it from God or someone else, why do you boast as if you had not received it but gained it by yourself? that is pride that you see all these apartments they belong to me the story in the bible where a farmer farmed and harvested then he said eat and relax my heart or my soul but that night he was told you poor man you foolish man this soul the owner needs it friends whatever you have it belongs to who to god If there is dif- if there is a difference between us it is because of what God has done in us. So there's no reason to for pride. Everything we have has come from God. So there's no reason for us to do it to take pride. We also requested to take st- to be steward to good stewardship or to take yeah, to be good stewardship of our body. In the book of Leviticus 19:28 Leviticus 19:28 The Bible says, "Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. I am the Lord. You shall not make any cuts on your body in mourning for the dead or make any tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord." Friends, for you to be a person, eh wewe ndio uko uko sasa. Azima uwe na tattoo. And I tell you this is what the bible is saying lazima uwe na tattoo and i ask myself there are some tattoos that i see in in person i ask god when that person was being put that tattoo alikuwa ameka namna gani you have no even regard of your body and you know this is god's property because this body carries the spirit you cannot say i'm going to preach by spirit at mimi unapo spirit ya bit zinaenda you need the body and i'm asking you friends ukienda kukato hiyo tattoo ulikuwa umekaje kwa sababu kuna zingine ziko mali pengine hata siwezi sema but you know where it is i cannot talk of the one that i can see here and here na huku hivi but i'm asking ulikuwa umekaa namna gani allow me to share this a young man was looking for a formula this man was he was learned he had all the degrees <laughs> doctor don't ask here kama akona degree kama akona joto kwa sababu ya degrees but this young man looked for a job for many years and one time an opportunity rise up for him and he went did all the interviews the job was not local it was outside the country he went and did the interview he passed and then the, one week before they traveled they were called off for the final touches and this man went 
So that day when he went to the office, he had a t-shirt. Are we together? He had a t-shirt. Here, there was a tattoo. And the manager said, you have lost the job. I cannot recommend you without a tattoo. Without a tattoo. Put yourself in the life of that young man and the, and the family members. Because of what? Tattoo. Tattoo. He said you become a good steward of time. Time. Our God works with the time. Good, a good steward of tithe. Don't eat God's money. You are worse than people that are in committee prison or Langata. If you can eat God's money. And somebody said that eating God's money is like taking the seeds. Mind ya kupanda. Sina kuwa narangi. Unayosha alafu unaipika. It is unfit for human, even your tithe. Your tithe is unfit for? <laughs> Number two, our management opportunity will end soon. Nobody knows which soon or which sooner, but our management opportunity to do what? Will end soon. The manager was getting fired for mismanagement. The employer evidently gave him days to update his records. He knew that he had only a short time to manage his employer's money. And then he would be in a whole new situation of being jobless. But reminds us that the duration of our earthly lives is very limited. It's only now. This that I used to do 10 years back, I cannot do. Because this is flesh. Even you, you are growing. We are growing gracefully. Are we together? But do something. That when you leave this earth, people will say, there lived somebody who touched my life. Be a good steward. Please walk straight. Do your things. People are in business. I don't take a 50% profit. Kula kidogo ukule siku mingi. Atuto kula haraka ifanya nini? Ikuishe. Number three. We can enjoy heaven more by being generous now. As you saw that in verse number nine. Using money now with an eye to eternity. That I'm using this money. Yes, I don't have a lot. But this all that I have, I can use it with an eye for eternity. Entry into heaven is a gift only paid by Jesus' death for our sins and received only by faith apart from in our work. You receive this gift by faith. Then you exercise, this, you exercise this gift of faith by the resources that you have because the Lord has blessed you. The Lord told Abraham, I will bless you to become a blessing. But I cast those who, those who will cast you. Not him to cast. So the Lord will cast them on his behalf. You only go around once in this life. This life you only go it once, not twice. Nobody has died and said, I died at 55, I decided at, at 60, I want to live again 55 years. You go around this life once. So use your money and stuff to make all the eternal friends you can. All there, because the somewhere we are going, all the eternal friends are too. Jesus called money and righteous mammoth because riches promise much and perform nothing. Riches will, 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 will promise you heaven, but it produce nothing. And somebody said, Nika mawatu nyana wana yataka hichi akula ya hichi wana ini? Delivery. They promise you heaven. Did they deliver heaven? No. Jesus said, if you give to the poor, you'll have treasure in heaven. So, support your needs. You have your needs. Support your family. Support the nation. And, sub and enjoy reasonable, sensible comforts with a worshipping heart. As I finish, principles of giving. Number one. Transfer ownership of your money. 
if you have bought a plot, we are very keen to do what? To do transfer. Because this plot was in somebody's name. So you have to transfer to what? To your name. So transfer your money, your possessions, your time and your talent, and your, uh, your earning power to God. Number two, make stewardship the purpose of your life, to exalt Christ and proclaim the gospel. That is the only thing that has made us to be in this place a day like today, that we can proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Put yourself in a position to use that money now to honor God and accomplish that purpose. Which is our purpose? To win souls. To bring souls into the kingdom. Faithfulness is always rewarded beyond our wildest dreams. Your dream is very small. But when you are faithful, you are rewarded beyond your wildest dreams. So be faithful. May the Lord maintain us in faithfulness, even though that faithfulness may sometimes involve us in an appearance of utter failure. Yes, we'll fail because this is not our home and we have an enemy. The Lord will make us good stewards. Just tell him, Lord, I want to be a good steward. You saw me and you have a lot of faith in me that I have in myself. That I can, I can be a steward of your, of your resources. The Lord is ready to take you back and bring you back where when he saw you, where he put you. When I see fear. Allow me to say this as I, as I conclude. Faithfulness. There was a father who had two sons. And the father wanted to know the faithfulness level of his sons. So what he did, he gave them beans. Beans in a maharagwe. Give them beans. And told them, go and plant these beans. Then bring me, bring, come back to me after three weeks. The father, what he had done, he had, he had gone ahead and boiled the beans. And you know, a boiled bean cannot germinate. Do I have farmer, farmers in the house? A boiled bean cannot germinate. So after, three we after two weeks, one of the shrewd son went and bought other beans and came and planted. Lo and behold, they germinated. But the faithful, faithful son came back after three weeks and told the father, I've tried my best, I've watered, I've manured, never germinated. The father said, well done, good and faithful servant. But to the other son said, you are very shrewd. This is not what I gave you. And he confessed, yes. After two weeks, I went and bought. He said, I wanted to see the level of your faithfulness. Friends, the Lord is measuring us. He wants to see the level of our faithfulness. Let's stand on our feet. You know yourself, as I know myself. Nobody can give my testimony. It's only me and God can give my testimony. You know you are once faithful. You are once a faithful steward. The Lord gave you a hundred thousand. Let me begin from ten. Give you ten thousand. You brought a thousand. He saw your faithfulness because you are good st a good steward. He gave you fifty. You brought how much? Five. When he gave you a hundred, you brought a thousand. Because the needs are so many than a hundred thousand. But the Lord is saying, trust me because I hold your future. It is me who gave you that office of being a steward. But you are disappointing me. Some of us are sitting on a promotion because they don't want you to be promoted. Bible said promotion comes from where? From God. But you cannot be promoted because he knows when you are promoted, he's going to lose you. So it's better stay on that seat. Ukifanya tu masama sot hapo, pole 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 pole, but the beauty is, you are a faithful tither. At 50,000, you are a faithful tither. Because 5,000, Niki Dogo Sana. But he says, be honest. If I give you this promotion, and you want 100,000, I'm going to lose you. So before you go to the, before the Lord in prayer, I want to say this. The first stewardship is for you, giving Jesus Christ your life. All other things will be added. But first and foremost, if you're not born again, you cannot be a steward. He wants you to give your life to him so that he can give you, place you in that office of being a steward. Are you here? With every eye open. Because we get born again in the open. We sin in the dark. 
but you get born again in the open. Are you here? You're not born again. You don't know where you are going. You don't know you are left or you are right. You don't know you are front or you are back. Nobody knows where you are. And you tell the Lord, I want to exchange my life with a better life. This altar is open. And now, when every eye is closed, you are there. And you know for sure you have not been a good steward. You have not been a good caretaker. And not because you have been told that your work has come to an end. You are going still behind your, your boss and calling those people so that you can have a place to call a home. You can have a place to go when the job is over. The Lord is saying, don't be shrewd. I'm able to make you stand once again because I love you. Go before the Lord. It is you. It is about you and go. Take short accounts of your life and tell the Lord, I used to be faithful, but now I'm not faithful. Father, I want to thank you and I want to honor you. You are such a good father. You are such a loving father. You are such a forgiving father. When we lose our way, dear father, you bring us back, Jehovah Father. Yes, dear Lord. We got some of the properties that we have out of shrewd choices, dear father. Out of shrewd ways, dear father. But this morning we are coming to you. Bring us back to where we belong. Bring us back to you, Jehovah Father. Oh God and our master. We desire to be good stewards. Because you have seen that in us. That dear Father, when you are not led by lust or greed, Jehovah Father, we can make good stewards. We want to thank you because you know that our goal is heaven. But Father, hold us by your right hand. Bring us back to you. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.